Alrighty guys, welcome to part two of Walker Explains the Inventarium from Atomogy. Again, if you'd like to use this particular setup, you need to have Thoncraft 4 and Atomogy. The latest versions would be best for you, uh, along with Minecraft 1.7.10, of course. And uh, last part, we went over all the different items that we were going to need to make this work. Today, this part, we're going to look at how to set up a very, very basic inventarium uh, along with one unseen scribe in a chest to see how that works, okay? I'm outside of my uh, master build just so that I can show you how this works uh, from get-go. And I'm going to build this above ground, but I usually recommend like I have in here, that you center the inventarium build underneath where your normal setup is. And that's because this does have a range. Uh, I believe it's a 10 block range. Let's uh, make sure that I'm not telling you something wrong. Uh, seven by seven by seven area on the scribe, seven by seven by seven area around the core. Uh, 10 blocks for the unseen scribe to the core with eight additional blocks allowed per auto cluster. So the, any unseen scribes you have linked to the inventorium and we'll show you how to do that. This particular part, uh, have to be within 10 blocks of this guy, unless you add these guys to it and we'll see what that does. Okay. But. I normally recommend you build it underneath and centered uh, around your storage system. You guys can figure out a way that you like that works best for you. Oh look, it's going, oh that's weird, it usually doesn't go through the wall. But at least now this tome is working. Anyway, um, that might go pose a bit of an issue, because I kind of need that. That's okay, we'll see what happens. Um, I'm going to set this up out here. And I'm just going to link it to an unseen scribe that is reading a chest. And I'm going to show you how it works, um, how the unseen scribe reads, and uh, why you need the uh, Scrivener's Oculus, depending on what kind of chests or storage you're using, okay? So let's start by getting this thing set up. What you need to get started is an inventarium core, Bookshelves of some kind, either regular or enchanted or ensorcelled. I really recommend you take the time to make the ensorcelled though, okay? Recommend it. You do need a memory block. You don't need it yet, but it is recommended you get it set up now, um, just to get it out of the way. Two of them actually would be best. You need some amber blocks. One to set up the inventarium and one for every, uh, well, no, not one for every memory block, but at least another one. I'll show you why in a second. And you do need at least one order crystal cluster. Again, I recommend getting a couple more, okay? Um, and you don't need a wand for this setup, but I'm going to make sure I have one just in case, okay? So let's show you how this gets working, all right? First, you got to put down your amber block, okay? Then you got to put down your order crystal cluster, okay? And now this is very important. The inventarium core has to be placed last. I can't place that right now. It won't work. It won't do anything. Nothing. Okay. You need to place down your bookshelves first. And they are placed down in a corner pattern around this thing. Okay. So it kind of looks like this. If I remember right. Like that. Let's check that and verify and see how good my memory is. Yeah, there's uh, empty one empty space around the uh, cluster and then the bookshelves, all right? So we can actually go like this now. By the way, you could fill all these spaces with bookshelves, but um, you don't need to just quite yet. And you fill it use whatever filler material you feel is necessary. Uh, 
There, does that look right? Pretty sure that's exactly what I need, yep. All right, now I should be able to place this guy. Just like that, okay? And that would normally disappear and go away. All right, so now our inventorium, inventorium, sorry, is actually set up. It's ready to go. We don't have to do anything else. Um, as you notice, we have the ability to, with these particular bookshelves, read up to 3,888 separate slots. This will support one unseen scribe on its own without needing any extra stuff to it. Um, and there is zero out of zero memory slots in use because we don't have any memory cores uh, blocked set up. Now then, to increase the range that this thing can re see unseen scribes with, uh, you know what I gotta do first? Before I do anything, I just, I just gotta go do something. Um, because these are so close to one another, they might accidentally link up here. So I'm just gonna break that one so it doesn't link to it, okay? Just for our demonstration, I can fix that easily enough. Alrighty. All right, so what I need to do is get an unseen scribe and place it down far enough away that you can see that it won't work. Okay. Um, da -da 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 that should be far enough. No inventorium core within range. Okay, it has to be right now as it stands within 10 blocks of this guy, um, which means I believe here should work just fine. See, and you can see that it's now linked to that. It's not reading anything, but it's now linked to that. And linking it is simp as simple as just right clicking with a wand. Okay, we're just gonna break that. We're gonna break that. Well, that's kind of limited, right? I mean, geez, you, you'd like to be able to put them quite a distance away if you need to. Well, if you bring some more order crystal clusters with you, which I recommend you doing anyway, you can place them around like so. And it will increase the range of this by eight blocks per order crystal cluster. And this is also important for when you get the requisition tome because that's the same dealio, okay? Um, and as you can also see, because I added some clusters, my, the number of scribes this will support also increased. So depending on the number of scribes you want, you need extra uh, order crystal clusters. <coughs> Important safety notice. Do not put a crystal cluster right here. It should, in a moment, destroy itself. Okay? Um, as far as I can tell, this inner blank space has to remain blank. All right. Um, only on this plane. You can have stuff on the floor and you can have stuff up above. But as far as I understand it, this has to remain blank. Um, and it actually might be this level as well. Uh, just because of empty space around the inventarium core itself as well. Okay. Anywhere that's not these empty spaces shown in this diagram, you can put items to increase the power of this. However, it does have to be within a 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven area centered on the inventarium core itself, okay? Um, which pretty much means three down, three up, and three out on all sides, okay? So I could put a crystal cluster down here, and it'll be just fine. It won't hurt it at all. And in fact, it'll increase the number of slots. This also goes for bookshelves, okay? We should now have more inventory slots that we can read from. So you can add more from more uh, uh, inventory slots. And then finally, the next thing we need, which is the memory blocks, okay? Uh, to link to the requisition tome, and or the golemic inhibitor, you need a memory block. Which is why I said I recommend making at least two and just setting them down now. Because the other thing is, is it has to be sitting next to an amber block. Not the glowing amber block from Atomogy, but an amber block. And you can use the base one um, as a, uh, a um, base to set it next to. Or you can put down another amber block 
and set it next to that one as well and that should light up too letting us know that we now have two memory slots that we can now use all right um, so it doesn't have to be right next to the center amber block uh, you can put it out but if you remove that particular amber block the memory core goes dark and the inventorium can now only support up to one item on a memory block you do not need memory blocks for unseen scribes you do need them for golemic uh, I said inhibitor I didn't mean inhibitor the uh, this guy Taskmaster, the Taskmaster and the Tome. Okay, so you need them for those. Uh, I'm just going to put that there. And like I mentioned, you can do like this. All right. You can also do that, and that should work just fine. Yeah. And uh, there. I believe that's. Yeah. All right. So you have some freedom on how you arrange things around this uh, but you do need to make sure you don't put them where the empty spots have to be or else you're gonna break the whole thing pretty simple right I mean right now it seems pretty easy um, now then the part where some people start getting a little confused we need an unseen scribe. I'm actually going to put this away. Uh, I'll keep that. I'll keep that. And I want a normal chest. I want a hungry chest. Wherever that may be. And I want a tenacious chest. All right. Here's the deal. The Unseen Scribe, okay, will read uh, from the first inventory found behind it. And if I place that down, and I place a chest down uh, behind it, okay, uh, link that up, and put my Osmium ingots in there. Now this thing only reads, you cannot request from it, all right? But it will read everything that the inventorium is linked to, in, and uh, that is all the chests that it's linked to. You can set it for reading what the inventorium is linked to, or you can set it to local, which means only what this particular unseen scribe can read from. It is right now only reading from regular Minecraft chests. So if I put that chest down there, um, it will read that. It is a 7x7 seven seven area around the scribe, okay? That means if I put this chest um, way over here, all right, and I put my item grate in there, it doesn't read it, all right? So it is limited on where it can read from. Likewise, if I put a hungry chest down here and I put my item grate in there, it's still not going to read it because it's linked to these chests. Uh, in specifically, it's linked to Minecraft vanilla chests. Okay, can only read from those. Now, if I broke this and I placed it here, and now I relinked it, it should only read from hungry chests. Now, see, it's not reading from these two. That's okay if you're like me and you only use one particular kind of storage but if you happen to have a bunch of different kind of storage chests and you want to be able to read from all of them using one unseen scribe instead of having something like this happening <laughs> see now it'll read from everything or locally it can only read from chests because that's what the first storage device it showed up came from right um, if you're like me and you only use one type of storage system, totally fine. Uh, but if you happen to use multiple different kinds of storage, but you only want one unseen scribe for reading, you need what's known as the Scrivener's Oculus. Really neat tool. You also need a couple of crystalline eyes. One for every type of storage you want this to read. The Scrivener's Oculus, which we saw how to make 
way down there, goes right on top, right click, right on top the unseen scribe. Now then, here's a problem. It's not reading from anything anymore. Why? Because we haven't linked anything to it. We take these crystalline eyes and we say, hungry chest. Doesn't have to be this hungry chest. I could link it to this hungry chest, in fact. Okay. Um, if I plug that in, oops, here. Oh, <laughs> well, that's something I didn't know. I wonder if that's in here. Somewhere behind it, size of the area the scribe can examine. Uh, Oculus help overcome both restraints. One block in all sides, five eyes. Aha! Well, I didn't know that because the book didn't say it. Tuljin, you didn't say the range on the eye and the Oculus. All right, so it's 10 blocks within uh, the Scrivener's Oculus. There's always a range, and it's usually between 7 or 10 blocks, okay? Anyway. Hungry chest, so looking at that one, I could have another hungry chest right here though, okay? And I can put uh, this extra Thamonomicon in there. Uh, if we say it's watching that hungry chest, which is three blocks from me, plug that right in there. Notice it kind of shows the little hungry chest in the Oculus. Now it's reading from those inventories, okay? Really cool, right? But it's still not reading from the chest, so we have to link another eye to the chest, shift right click, plug that in, just right click, and now it will cycle between the two showing the different inventories it's reading from. It can take up to five of those, all right? So you can have five different types of inventories that the scribe is reading from. And there you go, you can see all of them in there. Awesome, right? So let's take like, um, I don't particularly want to use those guys because they will um, remove items from me that I don't want them to. Well, let's take a barrel from Better Barrels. Let's put that down there, right? Let's take a bunch of dirt. Put that in the barrel, okay? Still not reading dirt. But if we come in here and we grab this and we throw that in there as well, now it'll show us the barrel as well. And look, dirt. So that's how the Scrivener's Oculus works, along with the Unseen Scribe, okay? Fairly simple, right? I thought so, too. All right, so let's just recap this, because we might actually want to hold off on the next part. Um, we see, saw how to set up the inventarium itself, and how to set it up in the most basic of way. Um, which actually, and we're just gonna, I'm gonna leave one because I'm not sure that thing's within range. Well, no, let's see if it's in range. Yeah, it's still in range. All right, so we've seen, saw how to set it up in the most basic of ways. Of course, I'm using insourceful bookshelves. Again, I cannot stress this enough. You can use regular bookshelves. It just means the inventarium will have less item slots it can read from, okay? If you want the maximum number of uh, item slots it can read from, use the Insourceful Bookshelves. If you don't care, use regular bookshelves. If you want a mid-ground, use the Enchanted Bookshelves, okay? Um, I cannot stress that enough. It does not have to be, uh, and if I remember correctly, it can be a mixture. I can put down, uh, la la, where did that just go? Okay, did I mention that you right click on the inventarium core to get uh, this? If I didn't, I'm sorry, but that's how you get that up there, okay? Um, 3,888 slots, if I put down one of these, it should increase it, okay? Yes, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Also notice I'm already using up 172 item slots, all right? Um, one, two, three, four, and for some reason that's like a ton. I'm not sure why, to be perfectly honest. Hundred seventy-two item slots. Hmm. Huh. Oh, what am I talking about? I 
Derp. It's reading all the item slots, not just the items that are in there. I'm a dummy. <laughs> Ignore that. Yes, when you link the inventory up to an unseen scribe that's reading inventory slots, this number is the actual number of total inventory slots, not just the number that the items are um, taking up. So if I go like that, it's still going to read 172. Uh, that was just my mistake. I made a little bit of error of judgment. All right. Um, if I didn't mention it before, I'll mention it now. The Unseen Scribe runs off Ordo Centi V. Make sure you have an Energizer node nearby, along with V relays if you need them. Uh, depending on how far away you put your scribes, you may need a V relay. This does not run off of anything. It runs off of itself, okay? So you do not need Centi V to run this. But in order to get anything out of it, you do need some Energizer nodes that have Ordo Aura, uh, Ordo... Um, v in them somewhere nearby okay that is setting up an unseen scribe to read different inventories uh, and if you need to uh, remove an eyeball from the oculus shift right click and there it is if you want to clear the crystalline eye shift uh, right click no hmm. Maybe that was an old version. Or maybe I'm thinking of a different... Uh... Oh, I'm thinking of the, Ocu the, uh, the um, Oculus Anima. O Oculo Anima. <laughs> oh. uh, you can reset this to almost anything. This All this does is it watches a block. Okay? That's all it does. Watches a certain block. And depending on the, the uh, tool you use it in, it will um, do different things. Notice it's uh, just reading itself. Uh, did you see those little black thingies coming up? See those? That means that that's not doing anything. Um, either it's too far away, or there's nothing for it to read, or something along those lines, or it's not getting any centivy. Um, you'll see those coming up from the scribe itself if it's not getting enough juice to read from. It's a good way to troubleshoot. Is this, uh, See? That's because I already have chest set up for reading, right? So there's no need for it. I'll put it back on the barrel, and it'll be just fine. Check it out. All right, guys, that is the basics of how to set it up. That is the basics of how to set it up in the basics of the Unseen Scribe and how it reads inventories and how it allows you to set up the different types of inventories you want it to read from. Okay, You can sort uh, by local or inventorium. This one, because it's the only scribe set up, it's local is that anyway. If I had another scribe over here uh, with its own inventory with another thermonomicon in there. Uh, all connections are in use. Of course they are. And I actually might have this a little bit too far away, so we're just going to come over here so that it's close enough to get some Centiv. Is it getting enough? Oh, it's getting some from over here. That's fine. All right. So right now it's set to inventorium. It's reading everything. But if I set it to local, it'll only read what this scribe can read, right? Which happens to be just this chest. That's actually kind of useful if you're troubleshooting. You're like, I know I had 64 dirt in here. Why isn't it reading it? You can set all of them to local and see which one um, isn't reading what it should be. So like if I came over here and I set it to local and if the dirt disappeared, I know that it should be reading dirt and it's probably something to do with my Oculus, right? You can search by name. Um, oops. Shard, right? And you can order either by item count or by name, okay? That's about it. You can 
switch between pages. By the way, Tuljin, I forgot to mention last time I talked to you, but uh, your book is cut off over here. I'm sure you found that already, and then the next update you will update it, but just letting you know. I don't know if that's because of NEI or not. It could be because of NEI, um, but I think I turned NEI off. Oh, hmm. Huh. It's not turning it off like it's supposed to. I will troubleshoot that myself. That's going to be it for part two. Part three, we're going to look into linking a golem to the uh, inventarium and linking a requisition tome to it and having the golem transfer items from uh, the inventories, inventories to another inventory because that's pretty much what they do is they move items from one spot to another uh we will see how that works and then in the next part i will show you and i'll go through step by step this system that i came up with which seems to be a fairly straightforward and fairly easy uh system that works fairly well all right and then after that i will show you the multiple destination setup that I came up with and hopefully by then Tuljin will have released the next version of Atomogy which will have support for multi-destination sorting all on its own without needing this specific setup that I have going on here all right but I'll show you this anyway because it's actually kind of cool um that's gonna be it for part two next part golems and requisition tome we will see you there.